Public law really deals with the basic building blocks of the legal system. What are the various institutions that make law? So we learn about Parliament, the House of Commons, the privileges of Parliament, the role of the House of Lords, the role of democracies and organising principle of the British system. We see how laws are made. Then we see how the courts interpret those laws. Because Britain is very unusual in that its public law system is uncodified. Unlike almost every other country in the world, Britain doesn't have one document that sets out its constitution. What it has is what's called an uncodified constitution, which is really a series of shared expectations, rules, established practices, and also acts of parliament that constitute Britain's constitution. And we find out in this course what those are. What are the practices? What are the assumptions underlying those practices? What acts of parliament the court says are constitutional? What are they not? And it shows how the system works in very interesting ways. Having looked at the basics about how law is made in Britain, what the institutions are, the role of the Prime Minister, the Cabinet, the House of Commons, House of Lords, the monarchy, we then also look at how the courts uphold the Constitution, because they're a very important actor. We look at how the courts interpret legislation. In certain circumstances, courts twist the words of Parliament to come to a certain result in order to protect the values of the Constitution. We see that the courts have set out things like the rule of law, judicial independence, the ability to access the court, freedom of the subject from arbitrary detention, all of those things. The court has interpreted statutes in very interesting ways in order to achieve certain legal results. The British constitutional system doesn't exist in isolation. For 40 years, EU law has been part of the Constitution. So at the moment, a lot of what we study is also looking at how the very complicated process of disengagement from the European Union will work. We look at what is the status of EU law in the British Constitution. We look at EU law takes priority, when it takes priority, whether the courts have put any limits on giving priority to EU law. Then we look at how Britain would legally pull out of the EU. How would they make it so that there isn't a legal vacuum where all the EU law that's currently applied suddenly disappears? We look at the mechanism they've used to allow the government to change the law quickly enough to adapt Britain to Brexit and also what that means for Britain's future. The other element of the British Constitution that we look at in quite a lot of detail is the devolution settlement. Scottish Parliament, Welsh Assembly, Northern Ireland Assembly, and we look at what powers they have compared to the powers held by the Parliament in Westminster. Who holds the final say in constitutional change in the UK? Does Westminster Parliament need the consent of the Scottish Parliament or the Welsh Assembly for big changes? And how those systems interact? How does Britain's constitutional legal system work? Who are the key actors? What are their powers? What are the sources of law? And how do those actors, the courts, Parliament, Devolved Parliament, European Union, European Court of Human Rights, how do they all interact to give us the political system that we have today? Mm -hmm.